Hi everyone, it's Professor Davis here from ChemSurvival.com and the YouTube channel ChemSurvival. And today we're going to talk a little bit about converting bond line representations into Newman projections. But it's not going to be just me talking this time. This time I'll be collaborating with Frank Wong, who has his own YouTube channel, Orgo Made Easy with Frank Wong. Now, Frank is going to try to help you understand how to get through converting these bond line representations into corresponding Newman projections on paper. So this will be a valuable skill the next time you take an organic chemistry exam. And once Frank is done, I'll come back around and show you a three-dimensional rotation and exactly what should be going on inside your head when you're using Frank's technique on paper. So let me hand it over to Frank for now, and I'll see you a little bit later in this video. Hello. I'm Frank of Orgo Made Easy, and as Professor Davis probably told you, this is one of our first collaboration videos, and we're going to work together to show you guys how to go convert your mon uh, mon bond line structure into the ever, ever most annoying Newman projection. Okay, so buckle up and get ready. So let's say your professor asks you to draw a Newman projection if you were looking down the carbon 2 to carbon 3 bond, so like that. How the heck would you do it, right? It seems kind of really hard and almost impossible sometimes. Well, I want to show you a technique that I use when I um, tutor students and when I do these problems. I recently found, found it, and I feel like it's helpful for, helpful for keeping track of where the wedge and dash bonds are and just where everything is. It involves eyeballs, OK? So be ready. I'm going to have you draw two eyeballs. The first I would recommend you draw is right here, this eyeball over here. This is going to be our new point of view when we're looking at it in a Newman projection point of view. So new point of view, OK? We're going to be looking down the carbon 2 and 3 bond. So that's why you can't see it anymore if, you, if, you're in that, if that's your point of view, OK? And now the second eyeball that you, you're going to need to draw is your old point of view, so you can kind of keep track. So in our bond line structure, we were looking at it like this. So we were almost sort of looking at it from the right in terms of our Newman projection. So I would go ahead and draw an eyeball over here. Just like that. And then I would label it old point of view, just like that. Okay. Now if you have any questions about this, just pop it down below and we'll go ahead and answer it for you. So yeah, in our new point of view, if we were to look like this, then we would see a Newman projection. All right. And if we looked at it like this, then we would see our bond line structure. So now the first thing I like drawing or filling in is the in-plane bond. So that's the CH3 guy here and the CH3 there, the in-plane guys. Because those bonds must be this bond here and this bond here. Because these, well, these two bonds will look flat, flat and in-plane to your previous point of view, which is over here. And so it makes perfect sense. They're not coming out towards your eye like these two bonds. And they're, they're not going away from your eye like these two bonds. So. Um, they're, they're definitely not wedges and dashes. So this one here, what, what will it be? Will it be this guy or that guy? Well, it would be CH3, the one on the front carbon, or carbon 2, attached to carbon 2. Because if you look, if you put your head over here and look, it's like, oh, hey, there's the methyl group. So hey, there's the methyl group. And then if you look along the, your new point of view, it's going to be like, oh, hey, there's a little methyl group coming down here. So he goes over here. And like I said before, they're both in plane, flat. It's almost like if you were looking at it in your old point of view, they would look flat. And they do. They're not wedged or dashed. Okay. So I draw these two guys first, and then I would worry about the wedges and dashes. And we're pretty much already almost halfway done. Just give me a heads up. So I would then focus on the front carbon. That's just my personal preference. You don't have to do that. But on the front carbon, we have a hydrogen and a bromine connected. So Who's going to be over here and who's going to be over here? All right, take a second, think about it, hit pause if you need to. So bromine would actually be the guy who is over here. And the reason behind that is that this bond is the one that's actually coming out towards our eye. So this is going to be the wedge bond. That's why it's wedged. And then hydrogen's dash that's so going into the board. So it must be going away from our eye. And that's how you basically do it. So while I draw this in, go ahead and try the other two. OK, so we have fluorine and hydrogen. Who's going to be where? OK, so fluorine is going to be here in the back. So it actually makes sense that it's dashed and going away from our eye. 
it's farther away from our old point of view, so that's why we had it on a dash before. And hydrogen was coming towards our eye in the bond line structure, so we're going to have it come towards our eye in the Newman projection, almost poking it. And there you go. That's how you convert a bond line structure into a Newman projection. If you guys have any questions, feel free to just ask us down below. And Professor Davis is going to take over now and show you guys uh, the actual rotation. You can almost think about it like as if you took the molecule, pulled it out of the board, and rotated it. And there's your Newman projection. All right, Professor Davis, it's your turn. OK, I'd like to thank Frank for that introduction uh, on his technique for converting bond line representations into Newman representations. And now it's my job to show you in three dimensions what Frank was trying to show you using those two-dimensional drawings on the whiteboard. And to do that, I'm going to use the same molecule that Frank did, 2S3R2-bromo3-fluorobutane. And its name really isn't all that important. What is important is the arrangement of the substituents around this molecule. So here's the bond line representation uh, figure already drawn for you in three dimensions. And Frank drew it something like this to put it down on a two-dimensional surface using uh, dashed wedges and solid wedges to show atoms going behind the plane and above the plane of the screen respectively. Now the next thing he did was he, he wanted to rotate these molecules so that instead of looking edge on at that central carbon-carbon bond, he's looking right down that central carbon-carbon bond in the position that these eyes are drawn here. So let's make a copy of our 3D representation from the bond line orientation and turn it so that we're looking, again, from this perspective. All right, here we go. OK, our rotation is complete. We've turned the molecule 90 degrees and are looking straight down on top of that central bond, also called the C2-C3 bond. Now, in this case, we get the orientation used to create Newman projections, which you're probably used to seeing being drawn something like this. So let's move that off of our 3D representation. So it's exactly the same molecule, but we're looking at it from a different angle. And of course, to turn it back to the bond line representation, we'd simply look at it from this side. But what's key to understanding how to quickly interconvert these two representations is that there are certain patterns in where the substituents go, depending on their location in the bond line representation. You notice these atoms here. If they're on the distal carbon, they all end up in a staggered orientation at the back of our Newman projection with bonds that are eclipsed by the atom in front. Whereas those that are on the closer of the two carbons along which we're citing also end up in an alternating pattern around the Newman projection, but this time with their bonds drawn all the way to the center. There's another trend that we can use. Notice that the atoms or substituents which have the dashed connections end up on the same side of the Newman projection, whereas those that have the solid wedges coming out of the plane of the screen end up on the opposing side of the Newman representation. So these are all patterns that we can use to try to very quickly and rapidly convert one of these into the other. That's all for now, everybody. Thanks for watching. I'm Professor Davis from ChemSurvival.com and the YouTube channel ChemSurvival. See you on the next video. Interested in seeing even more from Orgo Made Easy or Chem Survival Enterprises? You can find our YouTube channels at these links and some selected videos and subscription links below. Thanks again for watching, everyone, and as always, we'll see you on the next video.